actually, I didn't meet Chris till 1963 down at the uh, in L.A. at the uh, Troubadour, and uh, he was in a bluegrass band, the uh, Golden State Boys, with Rex Gosden, and uh, I had a band from Berkeley, the Pine Valley Boys, and we hooked up just learning about the music and. Chris was fortunate enough to be able to <laughs> learn from Vern and Rex Gosden, you know. And uh, so, you know, we had a, a good relationship even back then. You know, we were still learning about the music. And, you, you know, you, we didn't see much out here in California. Uh, you know, there wasn't uh, Internet and, you know, all of the things that, you know, make it a lot easier to understand the music. So I basically got into it by needle drop, you know, uh, the old way of learning how to how to play. I, I got my first dose of that uh, on record with uh, the country music album that Flatten Scruggs did on Mercury. That's what got me started on the banjo, and I just, you know, looked at my other career, and I just thought, nope, this is what I want to do, so, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking about being an architect, you know, okay. that would have been a lot of schooling and all that, but the music bug got me and, you know, I just fell in love with it. And then Tony and Larry, they were in a group called the Haphazards down here in L.A., and they were just young kids. They were like 13, 14 years old, and uh, we all played at this uh, bluegrass festival out in uh, Pasadena that Bob Stain S-T-A-N-E, had produced. And uh, so there were a lot of groups, you know, that were around that played at that festival. Uh, Kentucky Colonels uh, and uh, the Haphazards and the Pine Valley Boys. And I think David Lindley's band, the, the uh, Mad Mountain Ramblers, they played out there uh, this long weekend thing that we had going. And... Um, so uh, that's when I first met Larry and Tony. Yeah, so years later, of course, you know, I run into Tony and also Larry at a festival up in Grass Valley, California. And Larry said to me, hey, you know, we should do a record. You know, well, yeah, oh, great, okay. So he wanted to get with Chris, and so that all kind of, kind of fell together, and uh, so that's where those records came from. We had a great time, you know, sitting across from... Tony and Larry, you know, in the recording studio and looking at what Tony was playing, which was Clarence's guitar that I had seen many years before, you know, when, when I was working on Clarence's record for uh, his first solo album on Warner Brothers. You know, it was just a wonderful, wonderful time, you know. And Tony really brought it to fruition with his ability, uh, you know, and, and the, extending what Clarence would have done probably, you know. Actually, when, when the Pine Valley Boys, we came down from the Bay Area, Berkeley, uh, to L.A., we ran into the Colonels a few times at the Ash Grove, and uh, we got to be friends. And it was a very small circle of people that were into bluegrass at that point. And uh, so we would hang out with uh, the Colonels, and we'd learn from them. And, you know, it was just, it was great. Billy Ray Latham, you know, taught me a lot of stuff about back up and, you know, who to listen to and all that. Because, you know, we were 18-year-old kids. We were just starting out, you know.